To understand the true nature of reality, we need to understand what our world is made of. We know that the universe contains matter, which we thought was made up of atoms. But when we smashed them together, we discovered subatomic particles like protons, neutrons, and electrons. And later, we found out that they're made of smaller fundamental particles, quarks and leptons. So it seems these are the smallest building blocks of reality. But the problem is, because they're so tiny, we cannot see them, meaning electromagnetic waves are too big to bounce off elementary particles and travel to our eyes. And this makes it harder to describe their properties and their behavior. So we basically know particles this small exist, but we haven't seen them just yet. And so to explain them, scientists have invented a theory that describes particles as points in space. This helped us to define them, predict and calculate their properties with extreme precision. For example, scientists have recently been able to measure a key quantum property of the electron at a precision of 1.3 parts in 10 trillion. So just by imagining particles at points in space, physicists have created a good picture of the universe, which made it possible to advance science and develop technology we use nowadays. But while this understanding of our universe is good enough, it's not complete. Get ready to learn why the two pillars of modern physics contradict each other, how many more dimensions our universe could hide, what is smaller than a quark, and how things can be created out of vibrations. General relativity does a good job describing things on a very large scale, and quantum mechanics can give us a good understanding of how the world works on a tiny scale. But these two theories don't work well together, and they often contradict each other. Albert Einstein managed to unify space, time, and gravity. But the other forces of nature were missing to finally connect all these under one framework. Unlike other forces in the universe, gravity is too weak to be detected or observed on the scale of a particle. Physicists have ideas about how such a particle called a graviton should look like, but once they try to predict what happens when gravitons collide, they get an infinite amount of energy packed into a very small space. And this means mathematics is missing something. We only know gravity exists because of its effects only noticeable and important on the scale of extremely large objects in space. But quantum particles are so tiny, gravity becomes irrelevant in their interactions. String theory was born in an attempt to connect both these ideas and create a theory of everything. So what is this theory? It suggests that a particle isn't a point-like object, but rather a one-dimensional strand of energy or a string smaller than an electron or quark, or about 10 to the minus 33 centimeters in length, which is a millionth of a billionth of a billionth of a billionth of a centimeter. But while things that we see can move left or right, up or down, and back or forth, strings can move in at least 10 different ways, and be either open or closed. And some physicists think that the way strings move determines the attributes of all the things in the universe. To understand how strings can obtain properties of particles, imagine a guitar. Its strings are one-dimensional, but they can move in three dimensions when pulled, and the way they move determines the sound they make. In a similar way, quantum strings twist and turn or vibrate at different frequencies, which then creates the forces in our universe. This is also how a one-dimensional string of a certain length can twist in a way it would appear to us as a photon, a quark or even a graviton. Now, physics is largely based on mathematics, and scientists often reach a dead end trying to explain or calculate things just like with gravity. But if you replace point-like gravitons with strings, mathematically, they can collide and rebound without implying physically impossible infinites. String theory predicts the existence of the gravity particle, helps us calculate its interactions with other particles, and so can describe quantum gravity. Scientists have used string theory to explain different phenomena, such as the creation of the universe, dark energy, or what's happening inside black holes. The theory even implies the existence of hypothetical particles such as axions in an attempt to explain dark matter, and many more additional particles we haven't observed yet. There's a lot of potential in string theory, 
but there are problems with it too. With current technology, we can't prove if its predictions are correct. While some physicists believe string theory is our best chance to combine quantum physics and gravity, others say it's pseudoscience, as it seems to be almost impossible to test through experiments. And then there are dimensions. We think our universe consists of three dimensions of space and one dimension of time. But for string theory to work, we have to assume there are 26 dimensions. Although a more complete superstring theory cuts down the dimensions from 26 to 10. But even then, there are three dimensions of space and one of time. So if these six additional hidden dimensions exist, where should we look for them? One idea is that they are undetectable to us because of the process called compactification, meaning these dimensions are tightly curled up on themselves. Imagine a power line. To a bee flying far above it, it would appear as a 1D line. But to an ant crawling on top of it, this same line would be a 3D cylinder. According to string theory, something similar can be happening to dimensions in our universe. The possibility of these additional dimensions would also increase the number of frequencies in which strings could vibrate, which would mean a bigger diversity of particles. And because there are many ways in which six dimensions can be curled up, every combination would result in a different space-time or a different universe filled with different particles. So string theory also implies there's a multiverse of universes. A tremendous number of one followed by 500 zeros. Because of this, there are a quadrillion ways an exact version of our universe with the same set of matter particles and fundamental forces could be made. Among a huge variety of possibilities, we don't know why our universe would have the particles of the standard model instead of some other particles. There are hypotheses suggesting the geometry of our universe might have changed over time, transitioning from one compactification to another. And if so, the laws of physics would have changed too. According to superstring theory, particles in the standard model have supersymmetric partners, and we've already once predicted the existence of electrons, positrons, and other particles before discovering them. But if these superpartners exist, we'll have to build a much bigger version of the Large Hadron Collider that would create collisions about 7 million times more energetic to test the idea. There have been many variations and upgrades of string theory, and there's even a unified version called M-theory, proposed in 1995 by the physicist Edward Witten. The scientist believed that the different variations were all just different manifestations of a single underlying theory because, according to research, certain forms of mathematical transformations could be used between these versions. Put simply, it's possible all these theories are just different ways of mathematically expressing the same idea. But while M-theory remains the leading candidate for the theory of everything, much more advanced mathematical tools need to be invented to fully understand it. So far, string theory is very speculative and nearly impossible to test experimentally. But just because it's difficult to prove doesn't mean the theory is wrong. Einstein once said there was not the slightest indication that nuclear energy would ever be obtainable as it would mean shattering atoms at will. And here we are, using nuclear power plants on a daily basis. Do you think string theory is our best shot at explaining the universe? And will it ever be proven? Sound off in the comments and thanks for watching.